Peace and blessings, peace and blessings, divine beings. Thank you for tuning in to the Living in Spirit podcast. This year is just moving right on along, moving right on along. Uh, it's your girl, Zane Spirit. It's a blessing to be here, present to be here with you in this moment. Uh, no matter when you are watching this, I'm sending so much love to you and prosperity into every crevice of your life, you know? <laughs> when you winning, I'm winning. When I'm winning, you winning. That's how it works. That's how that's how the soul family works. It's how the oneness works. So, you know, we living in that. Um, definitely a lot of movement, shifting, and uh quote unquote dimensional traveling, astral traveling happening, everything taking place to where it doesn't even feel like uh it doesn't even really feel like we had a January. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I feel like February is feeling like that for a lot of people, too. And it's just, you know, I mean, who is even keeping up with time nowadays? I mean, other than the angels, because the angel numbers. But, you know, time is so, so irrelevant to the loop, to the shift. And I really find it interesting how um just astral traveling, astral projecting, uh, dimensional shifts, quantum leaping, it really pushes you outside of, you know, the box that time has us in. <laughs> You'll find a lot of people who live in the realm or who are just present with themselves, they do not give a damn about what time it is. Um, that's why I got a calendar, because if I didn't get notifications, I would not be here, okay? <laughs> I would not be here. Um, but you know, I'm blessed to be here. So I'm present with that, present with the way spirit is moving me. Um, and it's funny because I laugh at spirit a lot because I'll go into meditation um an hour prior to my uh at least an hour prior to my energetic healing work, like workshops and sessions and stuff like that. And <laughs> I will literally come out of meditation like spirit will pull me out of meditation a few minutes before it's time for me to get on the on the conference or like the, you know, in the workshop or do whatever I need to do. So spirit is always on time. But I <laughs> but I look, I wouldn't be if it wasn't for the, the spirit notifications. OK, um, with that being said, though, I wanted to highlight the sacred space for you guys, for anybody that's new to living in spirit or maybe you missed it. Um, I wrote about astral projection and astral travel recently in the sacred space. Now, the sacred space is on souldriveglobal.com. It's a password protected tab. And the only thing you got to do to get the password is to subscribe to either the newsletter, which we send out monthly, or our free tech service, which you get affirmations and weekly readings on there and all that, all that good jazz. And just by doing one of those two things or both, you can get the password to the sacred space and have access to spirit wisdom, meditations, recipes, all types of good stuff, all types of good spirit knowledge things that I've experienced, you can get, get the little, get the little razzle dazzle on there and, uh, lots of videos and informative things that y'all definitely asked me for. So the sacred space is where you're going to find my content, um, above all. And if you're watching this video right now, shout out to you. That's fairly new. That's something that we're doing now. Um, and that is featured on Spotify and it's also featured on our YouTube. So, Go check out our YouTube. You can just type in Living in Spirit or Soul Drop Global. You can check out our, our podcast on Spotify and watch the video as you're listening to this podcast, as well as some of our other ones. And if you're watching right now, you see I'm rocking the Reiki of Survive shirt. Shout out to Healing Panther, uh, HealingPanther.com. That's my, that's my girl, Kat. She doing her thing. She was my Reiki teacher. That's my pantheress right there. She's she's killing it. So I just wanted to shout her out. And uh, this is one of my favorite shirts. I love wearing my Reiki is a vibe shirt. So I had to put that in there. <laughs> but if y'all watching, um, I definitely be rocking y'all stuff. I, I rock my community. My community efforts is on a thousand. So I wanted to put that out there. And y'all go support her. 
go support her. Go support the videos. Go support the YouTube. Uh, go support the newsletter, the sacred space. I mean, there's so many resources. There's such a large connection uh, and network that is attached to Soul Drive. And everything that we're doing right now is very beautiful. And I'm so grateful for that. Like, truly, it's to see this brand grow. <laughs> And we're coming up on five years, y'all. Like, I got a toddler, and that feels crazy and amazing at the same time, too. But, you know, spirit is really catapulting everything that we're doing right now. So we're looking to work with more people. We're looking for people to write for the newsletter. We're looking for people to, you know, be on the podcast, be screened to be on the podcast. And I'm going to put the description on how to do that, all of these things in the description boxes so that y'all can tap in with that, tap in with us, you know, be a part of the community, um, to be seen in this community together. Like, like I said, if I'm winning, you winning. And if you winning, I'm winning. Like we love the success here. We love the exchange of success and, uh, we celebrate one another. So shout out to that. Um, for the affirmation, y'all, this, this affirmation is hitting with the topic of today which I can't wait to uh, get into. <sighs> First off, I'm going to take a little sip of water. Thank you to the spirit of water for blessing every single cell in my body. Thank you for cleansing and nourishing me. All right. Mm. And this affirmation is, I honor this vessel as a divine kingdom for my consciousness. I know that every cell in me is divinely orchestrated to see to my comfort and joy. I thank my body for protecting me and I allow my cells to release what no longer serves me. I provide permission for my body to rest and for any tension to leave me. Mm. We just breathing that in. Yes. Mm, run that back. Run that back if you need to. Let that sit with you. Let that sit with you. Let that be something that carries you through the week. Um, definitely love that one. And I say that it's coming into our topic because tonight, today, tonight, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about orgasm restraint. Orgasm restraint. What is orgasm restraint? Why do it? Why do it? What's the purpose of that? And I'm here to tell you, lots and lots of power and strength in an orgasm. If you think about, everyone has a spiritual womb, whether it's man or woman, it doesn't matter, sex, gender, whatever. Does not matter. Everybody has a spiritual womb. Everybody has a womb that is connected to that sacral chakra that produces, that creates, that is in divine creation, right? So just like, you know, you could be getting crafty with your hands. You could be making products. You could be artistic. You know, you could sing. You could, you know, screenwrite. You could do whatever. You could do whatever. You could be out there mixing potions in the back. <laughs> you could be drawing, you know, like crafting sketchbooks, scrapbooks, like, I don't know. I don't know what you do, but whatever you do is coming from the sacral. And that sacral is divinely connected to that, that womb, that womb space. And back when I was younger, I'll say at least... I ain't stop bullshitting until I, <laughs> I ain't stop bullshitting until later, <laughs> um, you know, but I was still early twenties when I stopped bullshitting. And, uh, what I mean by that is I used to play with my womb. I used to play with my womb. I used to be in a very hurt space, searching for validation in the sake, in the hands of other people, validation in and my worth in sex and, you know, allowing, you know, not even knowing the value of my womb, not even knowing the value of 
who I am, not even knowing my divinity and what I can create, not even knowing, <laughs> not even knowing what charges up this burning passion and this purifying fire within me, not even knowing where it comes from, what it does, you know, and I let a lot of people steal from that. And I mean, technically it wasn't stealing because I practically gave it to him. I did in a lot of spaces. I did. He has said, here, you can have this energy because I didn't know the power of my orgasm. I didn't know that my orgasm could create worlds. If you think about the cosmos and the Milky Way right now, it's orgasming in ecstasy. It's divine ecstasy right now going on. All these stars. All these Milky Ways, all these black holes. What do you think the black hole is? It's the womb. The womb was dark for you, wasn't it? It wasn't all light up in there. <laughs> it wasn't light up in the womb. No, we're all birthed from darkness. And that's what's going down. That's what's going down. We're birthed from darkness. And, um, you know, in that, like, we are divine creators, you know, Everything I create, everything I touch is a divine creator in its own right. It could be a drawing and that drawing is going to inspire something. It's going to create something. It's going to shake something. If I create products, they move, they, they create an outcome. That's a divine creator right there. That's power because I birthed it. Right. So like, I'm a divine creator. I create only divine creators. I create in my image. That's what it is. So, you know, we got to stop shortening the value of our creative power. And that creative power is in our bliss. It's in our joy. It's in, you know, the buildup of energy in our body that comes before an orgasm, for example, it builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And then finally there's a release and that release is so strong. It's powerful. So like when you share that with somebody, that's sacred. <laughs> that's sacred. And I'm not saying you got to be married to the person, but you got to be on the same frequency for that to create something beautiful. Because at that point you're in a co-creation with their womb and yours. So, you know, think about how we get the outcomes that we do with people. Think about how our connections, you know, how those connections create other things along the lines of, um, you know, with our with our space that we share together. So there's so much that goes into the womb space and orgasms and orgasm restraint. Um, but I needed to give a little bit of background on that power because a lot of us don't know. A lot of us don't know that we just out here giving the, the holy power out. Th that's why some of us are, we, we crazy <laughs> for somebody coochie or like they call it digmatized. And it's because that person is either snatching away your energy or they fueling your energy. They either pouring into you or they taking from you. And that energy is so sacred. And that's also in that space, you know, that's also a place where we can share energy in, in a different way. So that's why we may come in contact, like whatever we're vibrating with with this person could be why we come in contact with STDs. It could be in, in, why we come in contact with um, situations that are harmful to us or like, you know, why we produce babies because coming into a place of lack or abundance, whatever that may be. And of course there's some divine intervention in that with our higher selves, but you know, it's always a lesson and a blessing simultaneous. It's never like, you know, even if you was to contract every disease in the world right now, I'll still tell you, like, it just means you got some purging to do internally so that you don't resonate with that and you can heal that. You know, like, it's a lesson and it's a blessing for you because you get you on a journey to get to know yourself. 
And when you don't know yourself, anybody can plant seeds in your womb and start growing trees. Or they can start growing poison ivy. <laughs> they could grow sweet willows or they could grow poison in that thing. So, like, if you don't know who you are, if you're not protective of your womb, man or woman, like I said, it's for everybody. This ain't just the womb space is not just for women. And I, I don't think enough men value that womb space that they have in themselves because of society, you know. But regardless of man or woman, like, that womb space is sacred for everybody, no matter how you identify or what you got going on down there. So I needed to say that. And orgasm retention is important for everybody, okay? Everybody. Orgasm retention is important for everyone involved. Why? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, but what I wanted to touch on before getting to the whole point of orgasm retention is that there is a ritualistic process that I recommend everybody meditate on. I recommend everybody get to their juice with, with their spirit team and they see, they ask their spirit team, how do I need to do this? But um, intimacy is a ritual. You're creating something. You're creating something powerful. You're putting your energy towards something. And our society is so used to getting to the climax so quickly that they're just spurting out energy without the buildup and without any focus. So where is that energy going? Right? Like, where is that energy going without the intention? I mean, you could just intentionally be in your bliss, which is fine. But are you intentionally being in your bliss without making sure that the energy is right for your bliss to be had? That's like going on vacation, but you going on vacation to the slums on purpose. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, you going on vacation, but you going to a worse area on purpose to find your ecstasy, you know, to find your bliss. That's not that's a reflection of how you feel internally about yourself. You know, and like that's important to note before we ever get to why we do orgasm retention or why, you know, we even do these rituals for sex or and even intimacy personally. It don't even have to be with another person. You could be having sex with yourself or intimate with yourself. And that is equally as important, if not more important, because if you don't know how to be intimate with you, you don't know how to be intimate with no one else. You just going to be grasping for thin air, trying to please another person or, you know, like you're not going to be it's, it's not going to be reci reciprocity in that. It's not going to be reciprocated because if you don't know how to please you, nobody else ain't going to know either. I mean, they might hit it and it might be a blissful place, but it's still it's not going to the depths of you because if you don't know you don't nobody know you. That's that's it right there. And that is something I know to be true. I know to be true personally. Um, and spirit had to wake me up in a lot of different ways intimately in my life. <sighs> a lot of different ways intimately. Um, and I had to realize that I felt so drained, you know, with other people because Number one, I was just giving my my power away, giving my energy away. And then number two, um, I was fighting they they quote unquote shadows or what we call their demons. <laughs> I was fighting their attachments. I would have sex with someone and I would see what is attached to them. And it would be terrifying. It was terrifying for me. And then I would be used and abused because that's how I looked at myself at the time, unworthy and seeking validation in those spaces, right? So I would leave and I would, I've had many experiences that have came back to me later on in my journey simply because I had buried them so deep. 
And I was like, dang, I forgot all about that one, you know? And it's like some of those experiences we wish to never think about again, but there's really grieving that has to be had for pieces of us that we threw away in those moments. Pieces of us that we didn't want to acknowledge, right? Ways that we could have stood up for ourselves more. Things that we let go on because it was, you know, what we think we had to do in that moment. You know, not not understanding that, you know, and some of us, it's not even just casual sex or one night stands. Sometimes it's sugar daddies. Sometimes it's seeking more financial assistance. Sometimes it's, you know, prostitution, like whatever it may be. Sometimes it's a setup. I've been set up. <laughs> like didn't even know didn't even know I was pimped out so it's it's like that's a dangerous space to be in and there's a lot of intention that was in the in the root of that where I was being used and felt that energy but did not understand where it came from till later so there's a lot of power in protecting yourself and knowing yourself and discerning the situation. There's a lot of power in, you know, calling your power back from those situations. Cause they, I may have given my power back then, but when I recognized what I had did in those moments, I had to go back and say, let me take my power back from that person, from that situation, from that intention. And I took that power back and I transmuted it. I alchemized it to my highest good. I said, this is mine. You can't have that. You can't profit off me. You can't, you can't get my blessings. Because I may have not even orgasmed in that moment. But I so did like let them plant their energy in my energetic womb. And that's that had to go. You don't you don't get access to that. That's 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 heaven on earth, baby. That's heaven on earth. That's the garden of Eden. That's the garden of Eden. You can't, you can't eat off my fruits that bear there. You can't poison my fruits there. And unless I give you permission to, right? A lot of the times we're searching for the answers in other people. And it, a lot of times that's because we're afraid of the answer that we will find within ourselves. And I can tell you that you will 100% feel so much more liberated in the answer in yourself. And there's nothing wrong with sex. Sex is liberating. Sex is creative. Like, think about all of these divine goddesses, divine creators. Sex is so beautiful. Sex is so beautiful. divinely orchestrated sex is a divine act and there's nothing wrong with that so I don't look at my situations or like the past and be like oh I, I shouldn't have did that like no it was an experience I'm grateful for that experience I forgive that version of myself that felt you know pity or like a victim or whatever however I felt in that moment like I accept every version of me and I say you know what that wasn't the most pleasurable experience but it helped me to curate the divine expression that I have now which is very sacred very much in alignment with ritual ritual creation so you know like a lot of people will talk about <laughs> manifestation sex and things like that and, you know, I really recommend anybody who's coming at manifestation sex to first align themselves in the truth of who they are. Because if you continue manifesting with the same amount of self-worth that you had previous, or if you keep trying to manifest with you know, lack of belief or like not feeling like you're worthy or not honoring and respecting yourself or not, you know, choosing to wear rose colored glasses in the presence of someone else just for your temporary pleasure. 
baby, that that garden of Eden ain't going to be pleasurable for you. <laughs> You're not even going to touch that spiritual womb in all of your truth. You're not even going to know the true, the true bliss that comes in the depths of an orgasm. And I had to learn it the hard way. I had to learn, well, I wouldn't even say the hard way, but I had to learn the experienced way. <laughs> I had to go through the experience and that was what it was. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I can guarantee that my bliss is popping now because I know it's worth and I know who to share it with and who not to share it with. And there's just nothing like it. And there's nothing like the bliss with myself or with spirit. Like, let me tell y'all something. That self-pleasuring intimacy is intense. And it you start to realize, like, you really start to deal with yourself <laughs> in the in the presence of the ple the presence of intimacy with self, in the presence of yourself that you're facing. You are literally looking at your higher self. And you're you're able to experience head on what your fantasies are. You begin to identify the root of those fantasies. You begin to identify, um, you know, trauma based things that you may enjoy. Like a lot of things that I used to quote unquote enjoy pain wise in intimate settings, I no longer enjoy because. I'm not here to be in pain. I mean, pain can be pleasure sometimes. It's it's polarity. It's on the same, like, pleasure and pain are, they meet in the middle. <laughs> you know, just like oneness and duality, like, quote unquote, duality. But uh, they, they run on the same scale. So there's nothing wrong with pleasure, like pleasure and pain meeting. Um, but it was the intention behind the pain. It was the energy behind the pain. It was the energy of, you know, being dominated in certain settings. It was the energy of wanting to surrender, but not knowing my vulnerability to truly surrender. And then having a false surrendering to, uh, which became a codependency to other people, you know? So like, there's a lot of experience that I'm very grateful for. Um, but I do not like the same things. Once I got to know myself, I realized that I had on a mask of things that other people liked that I had adopted over time. And it was through those experiences that I liked pleasuring other people because you know that I felt like if I could please you I was worthy like there is a lot of hidden trauma and pain in that there was a lot of unworthiness in that and I had to rise up into my worth and it doesn't mean I don't like to please people but I like to please people for different reasons right like <laughs> Like the reasons that are wholesome, like I want you to feel pleasure because you are my divine reflection. You are me. So I want you to feel ecstasy. Like I want you to feel bliss. You know, I love seeing you in a blissful place, in a peaceful place, because that is, that is me. <laughs> it's reciprocity in that, you know? And if you're not coming to me in that same essence, I don't want it. If you don't see me as your divine reflection, I don't want it because you're not going to honor me. And if you don't honor yourself, you can't honor me. So if you don't see yourself as a God, God is a divine being, a creator, then we don't have nothing to talk about. You got to be equally yoked in this space. And that's what I recognized is that when I got with partners, once I recognized my worth, when I got with partners who did not recognize their worth, they could be great people. They could be amazing people. But if they didn't recognize their worth, I would get sick at the energy that was inside of my energetic womb.
I would get physically sick, like for weeks, because I would literally have to purge that energy out. And I, it was, it was something that I, last time it happened, I said, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I'm never doing this again. You can't have me. You ain't allowed to touch me. Ew. <laughs> and it's not that I don't love you, divine. It's just that you don't love yourself. And I can't do nothing with that. I can't do nothing to make you love yourself. You have to love you. And then when you love you, you are on equal grounds with me. But until then, like, you just going to be trying to plant unworthy seeds in me, whether that's in my mind or in my energy. Nah. Nah. That, that, mm-mm. <laughs> mm-mm. That ain't it. That ain't the juice. That ain't the sauce. I don't want it. I don't want it, baby. That's just what it is. And I, I think a lot of people make excuses as to why they <laughs> either like, oh, but they're a great person and they made me laugh and they settle. They settle in these spaces because ultimately they wanted somebody to love them when they weren't at their, their greatest. But you're not loving yourself if you choose to be with people like that. Like I can still love you and not be intimate with you that way. Love is not determined by the intimacy or by the sex. And if if all love is is sexual to you, then you have some healing to do. That's what that is. If if sex, if love is only sexual to you, or if all you think about is sexual intimacy in a sexual way, then you have not scratched the surface of what intimacy truly is. And there's so much more to it. There's, there's literally hidden treasure in the depths of that. And that's the only way you're going to find that is by loving yourself and getting to know you, being curious about yourself. So let's go into these ritual rites. All right, because I want to put y'all on a little bit of game. A little bit of the razzle dazzle. Once you have come into this place, of recognizing that you are open to receive the healing through intimacy through self because i'm not talking about partnership right now because once you have the self down these ritual rites of intimacy down with yourself then you'll know what to do with a partner i'm not putting you on to partnership ritual rights because y'all don't know what to do with that all right but intimacy like i said is a wonderful way to heal when I'm in a place of self-pleasuring, spirit has brought to me the root issue of a lot of the things that I was originally searching for and the things that were obstructing the intention that I was setting in my alignment and my manifestation. So I was able to see from a different perspective and look, you're not going to get a quick orgasm that way. I mean, you might sometimes. But I'm not just, take away all of the distractions. Take away the porn. Take away, you know, the extra noise, even the music. Like, I'm playing frequencies. I'm playing sound healing. You can still get off the sound healing. (laughs) In fact, you're probably going to be more wetter, okay? You're probably going to be more stimulated through sound healing than you would anybody's words or like R&B. And I'm not saying that those aren't great for intimate moments because I love me a good little R&B jam, but in not in this, not in this setting. We're not doing that. Take away the distraction. Take away the excess energy that is obstructing your view. Take away um, overstimulation from toys. You can bring those in later. If you just, you know, bringing up some resistance, of course, like with training your body, like it's like if you were going to the gym, you're not going to pick up a two, 200 pound weight. You're going to pick up that little five pounds and call it a day your first time. Right. So like you need to build up orgasm restraint. It's something that does not happen immediately. 
And when we're in the place of self-pleasure, we'll actually realize that we have we are able to self-pleasure a lot easier than in the presence of other people. Why is that? Because is with ourselves. There's more trust. And if you're not able to self-pleasure at all, there's, there's a lot of distrust there with yourself. And that will also come up for you to heal. I've had sessions where I just start crying and then I'm just not in the mood. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, <laughs> like, it happens. It happens. And that's okay. Like, intimacy is a journey of healing. And it is a journey of recognizing your worth and being in a place of self-love. Intimacy is an expression of self-love. Intimacy, even with other people, is an expression of self-love. Because if I'm intimate with you, it's because you're my divine reflection. I am honoring you as my divine. I'm doing for you as my divine. Because I am interested in witnessing your divinity. And I respect that and honor that. That's sacred to me. Just like I am sacred to me, right? So, like, I've had moments in the place of self-pleasure where I just get to the root of, like, dissecting the pain, the hurt, the trauma, like, the distrust, not being able to be in a place of of being in tune with my body and what that feels like like recognizing there has been so many moments where I denied what my body was feeling on purpose because I said no nah, I don't want to listen to that <laughs> and so when it's just me myself and I I have no choice but to listen so that's and then also I have another thing about sex toys um you can alchemize this energy, but if you're not <laughs> trained, like I said, you're not going to pick up a hundred pound bell barbell if you don't, if you haven't trained your muscles for that. Right. And so you can alchemize the energy of sex toys because it's electric and it has electric currents. Um, but if you are not trained in alchemizing energy, if you have not trained yourself to alchemize energy, within yourself. Do not try to do that with external things immediately, especially not in a vulnerable state of getting to know your self-pleasure and being curious in that, right? So let's just put toys to the side, okay? Like they are nine times out of 10 going to drain you. They're going to interfere with what you're doing and they're going to stimulate you so much to the point that you're not going to actually be able to be in the full state of bliss or uh, in the place of relaxation that it takes. Do y'all ever realize that, like, do you ever be in the, in the act of orgasming or the buildup and you realize you're clenching your fists, you're holding on to things, which are, you're gripping on to things as you build up the orgasm, right? Or you're like, clenching your vaginal walls or like you're clenching your sacral or your root you know for anybody and so have you ever noticed that there's so much tension in the body <laughs> when we are in the midst of trying to experience something so blissful and peaceful and relaxing why is it there is something seriously deep-rooted in tension in the body when it comes to pleasure and it is very much so psychological it is very much so in our dna and our roots and if you or your family has had a lot of sexual trauma if you are in a place of distrust with your partner or yourself that clinch up pay attention to it some of us even stop breathing have you ever recognized you fucking gasping for air? You stop breathing in sex. Why? Breath is life. Breath is that prana, baby. Breath is that ultimate energy. That is that godly energy right there. Breath, deep breath. You can orgasm from breathing. <laughs> I don't know if y'all knew that, but in meditation, you can orgasm from breathing. Yeah, because breath is a sensual, intimate act between you and the divine. 
And a lot of us stop breathing. A lot of us clench up all of our muscles in our body for that one moment of pleasure that is not even, we're not even basking in that pleasure. We're not even in the intimacy or the pleasure of that comes with that intimacy. So we have to get to the root. Everybody has a, a different personal reason of why they can't, why they clench up or, and, and it's what we've seen, right? Like a lot of us have been, have bear witness to that. So it's what we know. But if we get to the, to the root of it, you're going to find trauma there. You're going to find distrust. You're going to find a, a closed heart chakra not being willing to receive um, or not being willing to be vulnerable because you got to put down all your guards to receive pleasure. And that's something that a lot of us are afraid to do. And when we are in that, that space of pleasure, especially self-pleasure, um, in, in the rites and rituals that I'm talking about, when we are in, in the moment of building up the orgasm, building up the pleasure, if you find yourself clenching, tensing up, go deep into your breath. Focus on expanding your belly. Focus on expanding your breath in the belly. You will find that you are more like turned on and connected. And you will, nine times out of ten, have a more pleasurable, intimate moment with yourself by recognizing that. Um, and this may also, too, be like a lot of us want to look a certain way when we're having sex with other people. And that could be why we clench up so much with other people. But I've even recognized in my own journey that I would clench up with myself just because that's what I was used to doing. And so I didn't really know when I first started um, being learning and being curious about myself and what self-pleasure really meant and what intimacy really meant to me. I didn't recognize that <laughs> I had gotten so used to not trusting and not allowing and not surrendering that I was not even allowing myself to feel pleasure, truly. Like, it's depths to that. It's, I couldn't even let myself relax, you know? And then I noticed, like, it's all about speed. Everybody wants some speed. Like, no. Why are we rushing to the O? Why are we rushing to the climax? A good movie's climax don't happen in the beginning, right? Like, <laughs> you don't, you're not going to climax in the first you know, first moment. And that's, it's so silly. Like, and where's the foreplay in that? Like, a lot of us got to go back to making love to ourselves. And if you've never made love to yourself, now is the time. Now is the time. Make love to yourself. Make love to yourself. Make love to yourself, sweet love. And I guarantee you it'll change your life. You know, like set the mood, set some candles, turn the lights down low, get your incense out. Do this is what I'm gonna say about the the rights, the the intimate rights. Take you a good cleansing shower or a bath. Get your body cleansed. Then what I want you to do, start rubbing your arms, your chest, like. If you're watching the video, you're going to see me brushing off energy from the shoulders, the neck, the crown. And you're just going to intentionally release energy from your body. Intentionally release, you know, brush off any energy, any attachments, any connections. Go into meditation after you have cleansed and protected your space because you don't want to get real intimate in a space that ain't protected I don't know how our generation and just people in general have been <laughs> intimate anywhere without at least visualizing the cleansing and protection of the space. <laughs> but I digress, okay? I digress. Um, it's it's being intentional is so it it sounds like a lot of work, 
but it is so rewarding. And a lot of us haven't experienced that. A lot of us haven't experienced that. So like set the mood, set the whole environment for you to feel safe. Whatever is going to make you feel safe and comfortable in your most relaxed space. This is where you're going to reach your best climax. This is where you're going to be able to let go and release entirely. So set the mood, you know, take some body butter, some oil, rub it head to toe, rub it into your body. Thank your body. Say thank you for protecting me. Thank you for loving me. As you rub it in, thank your cells. Your body is what is housing your spirit. Your soul, your consciousness is being housed by this beautiful temple of yours. How wonderful is that? Like th that's in cause for celebration. That is in alignment with like truly just honoring your vessel and showing love to yourself. Why would we not celebrate that? <laughs> Why would we not? Like your body is literally functioning for the sake of your consciousness to keep moving forward. Like how beautiful is that? Like they are all in alignment and, and loving you. They in alignment with your highest joy, right? So like, that's so lit. I love that. <laughs> um, and I just think about that too. Like I thank my body. I get intimate with my body because my body is the one that is housing this powerhouse energy that we're about to let go in the big O, right? So like, when the cells are not used to that much power and stimulation, you got to reassure them that I'm here for you, that we are in alignment with one another, that I honor you, that I love you, that I'm going to take care of you. I'm taking care of you, right? So it is an intimate, trusting experience to have with your body, to be able to release, to be able to build up that sensual experience and to create that deeper connection with yourself. So it's so much deeper than just orgasming to just having this one, once a few moments and then that's it. That's not it. Like, let it be a buildup of love and appreciation. Let it be a, a slowly escalating movement that just it's you're a powerhouse you're a powerhouse truly and like when you recognize the powerhouse that you are like you start taking care of it you start taking care of yourself differently you start moving differently you watch what you eat you watch what you intake like media wise you you know take you contemplate more on what is good for your health overall what is honoring and loving you differently? And in this rites and rituals of intimacy, you create the stage to be vulnerable and to surrender. And that's powerful. You want to nurture this. You know, they don't just put a rocket in, in the middle of the desert. Like they have it on a platform for it to shoot up. They have built something around it to support it. And that's just like your orgasm. Your, your, your O has to be supported. Your body is supporting that, that experience, that intimacy. So cleanse your space, protect your space, ground yourself, go into a little meditation, get your visualization going. Some of the strongest intimate moments is when I'm visualizing myself eating the best fruits, being fed, the best fruits, like in a place of luxury, no clothes on, barely any clothes on or like some sensual wear, like, and I'm not talking about no bras and European style, none of that. Okay. I'm, I'm in a loincloth, <laughs> but you know, like whatever makes you feel sexy, like whatever makes you feel good, but definitely analyze like why you feel good in certain things, right? And so <laughs> there's a lot of questioning that comes there, but ask your higher self to show you what does my bliss look like? What does it look like? What does it feel like for me to be in bliss? And start getting that idea 
and then visualize that, you know, this is what we mean by manifestation in those intimate moments is to, while you're building up your O, you're going to be envisioning what you are doing with your life. Like I envision my fruits and vegetables, my gardens just overflowing. It's lush, it's green. <laughs> I envision like, you know, just, I mean, I ain't going to tell you all the deets, but <laughs> I just envision everything that I want in my life. I envision it and, and what it is because it it's already done, right? I believe that it's already done, but I'm in that space visually and I'm experiencing it. I'm experiencing this divine pleasure and it's so much deeper and I'm housing and supporting everything that is that. So in the buildup of that, I'm taking my time. I'm, you know, feeling all over. I am touching in places that may have never been stimulated. You know, like I'm getting curious to reach deeper into the depths of myself. And that curiosity is a gateway. It's a gateway. It opens up doors. It opens up doors to pleasure and intimacy that have never been discovered in this experience. And it will open up doors for you. Be curious. Be transparent in that. You know, a lot of us aren't transparent. We're not in our honesty. <laughs> we want our pleasure to look like everyone else's or what we think it's supposed to look like. And really, we need to be curious. Ask yourself, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What's the possibility of this? You know, if I was to step into this possibility, into this experience, how, what would be the full experience of that? And let your, let your mind go there. And if you find your mind wandering into different places, that's okay. That's often where the healing takes place. You're not going to beat yourself up for a wandering mind. It's like people who are like, mad at themselves for not being quiet in meditation. And I'm like, your mind is meant to be explored. Sometimes meditation is a great space to just observe your thoughts. What kind of thoughts do you have? Are they even yours? You know, like that's the same space, that same openness and curiosity that leads us to know ourselves more. So if you can get deeper into your mind if you can get to know why you're having these thoughts, ask yourself, where did that thought come from? What triggered that? Allow spirit to take you there. And then in that process, you might be healing something or releasing something or letting it go. Because don't forget that this stimulation is also an energetic release. You might be shedding layers of yourself before you can let go of, of this powerhouse of energy that is going to put towards everything, every place that your mind has been. So definitely saying that, you know, the, the more you practice it, the more focused your mind will be and the greater your visualization will be. Like that's a given. And it is important to come back to your focus, right? Especially when you are in about to bust, like when you're about to be in a place of releasing you want your mind to be in that place of whatever your intention is. So your intention could just be to experience bliss or peace or pleasure. Or it could be to manifest and to create. If you're looking to manifest and create, keep your mind in that space. If it drifts, that's okay. Bring yourself back into that. And then... The next part of that is once you actually do release. Now, before you release, if you find yourself getting to a place where you're about to release, try to bring your energy back into you. I know that sounds a little wild, but if you're tapped into yourself, you'll see your energy about to let go. Bring that sacral energy back into your body, like literally see yourself pulling it up into your body. So you're going to you might you might still orgasm. You might have dry orgasms. There's many different levels of orgasming by the way. And so the big thing is is that you don't want to have like your big O. 
And then you want to like just bring that energy back into you. See it coming back up into you. See it pouring into you. This is going to provide some restraint and retention. That's that orgasm retention. That's going to keep fueling your powerhouse. Every time you're about to come, bring it back in. You may even want to go like slower or take your time more. Keep building it up. You're not, you don't have to keep the same pace. You know, like communicate with your body on what you need and be playful with it. Be playful with it. It's not, it don't have to be a one size fits all experience. So, but when you do have your big O, this is the juicy part. Live in that bliss. Do not just get up and be like, Woo, okay, that was enough. Try to refrain from going to sleep immediately. Really live in that pleasure. Like feel the tingling through your whole body. Feel the intimacy. Like celebrate the intimacy that was just had between you and yourself. Like be present with that. Like breathe that in. Breathe that in. Why are you rushing? <laughs> you didn't rush your big O. Why would you rush out of your O? And then what I do too is I envision this release that I've just had coming back into my body. I claim all my energy back to me. <laughs> Y'all can't have it. So <laughs> I just pour that energy back into me. I see it coming right back into me and nourishing different aspects of my life, you know? Or whatever the case may be. So live in that nest. It's called nesting. Nest in that orgasm. Sit in it. Simmer in it. Let it, let it, let yourself rest there. Rest in the bliss. Rest in the eternal divine bliss. That's it. That's it. And as you explore this more, you'll know how to incorporate that in partnership. And yeah, but definitely get to know yourself first. Like I said, this is, it's unfolding. It's unfolding. You're going to be unlayering, unpeeling like an onion. And then before you know it, you're going to be like, wow, I know a lot of things about myself now that I did not know prior. And it's a really gratifying experience. As far as like books and things like that, I recommend um, looking into Tantra or Tantric. Also, the Magdalene Manuscript is <sighs> Chef's Kiss. Such a beautiful book, beautiful manuscript. Um, it talks a lot about self-pleasure. Um, those of Isis and yeah, just, just a beautiful, beautiful it, read. So I definitely recommend that. And um, yeah, you know, document and journal your experiences most, infor like, most importantly. If you document your experiences, you document what you have, you know, uncovered in these sessions with yourself, like you will realize how healing it is. And it's, you also going to see your life change, like your manifestations like that because you're in alignment you're in tune with your body you're in tune with the presence you're present you're physical you you have aligned your mind body spirit and emotions to directly be intentional with that and the more intentional you are with your everyday life the easier this process is so if you're sweeping your floors intentionally washing your dishes you know before you go to bed meditation you know like showering like your daily activities, if they're intentional, it makes this process of being intentional so much easier. Well, that is it, Divine Being. Thank you for being present with me in this podcast. I love you. The Divine loves you. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube, on our Living a Spirit podcast. You can also donate to the podcast. You can donate to anything that we are involved in. Um, if you would like to be featured in our newsletters, all of our links and ways to get connected with us is in the description. I'll see you next time.